Now, Gary Tabak is the former chief of staff of the NATO military liaison mission in Moscow, joins me on the line now. Welcome. Uh, two Thank Russian you. paramilitary groups have claimed responsibility for that incursion onto Russian territory. Um, but there are plenty of analysts are saying that they simply couldn't have carried that out without the help, some assistance coming from uh, Ukrainian intelligence. W what's your opinion? Do you think that Ukraine was involved in that assault? Uh, I, more importantly, I was not uh, only uh, chief of staff for, in, in representation of Russia. I was also deputy commander of the anti-terrorism unit in Turkey, so, which I'm very proud of, uh, serving with my Turkish brothers side by side. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, uh, come on. It's, it's, it's not. Uh, Ukrainians have absolutely nothing to do with it. Because you see what happens is that uh, Russians are allowed to fire and kill and wipe off the, uh, the cities of the face of the earth in Ukraine. And uh, they're, uh, they're allowed to steal ch children, which, uh, of course, the international court uh, has accused and uh, uh, Putin of war crimes in that sense regarding to children. Ru uh, Russians are allowed to kill the civilians and rape on their territory, but the Ukrainians are not allowed to fire back or to do anything or to provide even intelligence to some of the Russians who are rebelling against the tyranny of uh, Putin. So, of course, I do not think that uh, Ukrainians uh, helped in any way. Uh, and I and, and I stand by with uh, what uh, Minister Padelyak and what the President Zelensky are saying. To quote uh, Golda Meir, when they asked her if Israel has nuclear weapons, she said, absolutely not, but if we have to, we'll use them. Unfortunately, our world came to that point where we say one thing and we just say for political purposes something. As I remember, um, Turks has not have not hesitated for a second to shoot a Russian uh, warplane out of their skies when it entered uh, their airspace for 40 seconds. 40 seconds it entered in Syria in a war zone into the uh, Turkey and it was shut down. Listen, Ukrainians are being killed and murdered. They have to do what they have to do. What about other claims coming from Russia? Um, they say US military vehicles were used in that Belgorod incursion. I, I believe photographs were provided. It's very hard to verify these kind of things. What's your opinion? Sure, sure. I mean, uh, Russians also have said that they uh, have uh, destroyed several uh, uh, tanks, leopards, and they have said already that they have destroyed even uh, Abrams, an American tank, which is not even there in, in Ukraine. The, I'm not surprised if they will claim that they have shut down F-16 already that's flying over Ukraine. Uh, I do not believe anything that comes out of Russia. It's pure propaganda and lies. Regardless of, of, of the details we've just discussed there, the fact that there was some kind of incursion onto Russian territory, I mean, it could play out several ways. Um, Perhaps Russian citizens will become fearful for their safety. Uh, perhaps they'll push back against their, their government and, and this war in Ukraine. Or maybe they will look to their government for uh, protection. Could this play into the Kremlin's hands that, that there is any kind of violence on, on Russian territory? I think you're absolutely right. It could be both. It could be both. And this is the dangers of war. Sometimes you rally people around your government when such things happen. And sometimes you say to your government, hey, listen, you started this fight. You started. And now we are the ones that are paying for it. We lived in peace with our neighbors. We lived in peace with Ukrainians. They're our brothers. We prospered with them for, for, for centuries. We lived together in peace. And now what you have started this, you know, this is now causing us to suffer. Besides that, we have to pay for this war with our, uh, with our uh, benefits, with our, with our level of style of living, with, uh, with our sons and daughters, with our blood. Now we're also paying for it with, uh, with our homes. You know, the war came to our home. So it's both ways. It's kind of a sword that's sharpened from both sides. But I think that it is not so important for the Russians because I, to be honest with you, I really don't care what the Russians think. I think that it is important for Ukrainians to know, to show that there is a resistance, to show to the world that there is a Russian resistance, that Putin is uh, uh, nobody, not, not everyone in Russia loves him, that there are Russians that re realize 
that uh, Putin has de- Putin and his surrounding has destroyed that country, has destroyed Russian rich Russian culture, has destroyed uh, history of Russia, has destroyed the idea. Now in Turkey, and I've just recently last year I've been to Turkey again, um, and again uh, Russians have provided uh, so much tourism there, so much. Uh, 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 helped so much in uh, uh, trade and in uh, in benefiting the economy in Turkey. But nowadays, a lot of Turks are very weary, very weary of having uh, Russians come and visit them. I mean, this was my experience. I could be, of course, I could be wrong because this was only in Antalya and the areas where it is visited very often by the Ukrainians, Kazakhs, uh, and the Russians. So Russians are not welcomed in many places anymore, and they feel it. They understand that, and that's because of this war. Gary, I really appreciate your time and uh, your insights. Gary Tabak is my guest this hour. He's the former um, mission chief uh, for NATO in Turkey. That was, I believe, between 2006-2008. Thanks so much. Thank you.